So how do we figure out, you know, we have some sort of spot we're trying to figure out some house or whatever, some stream. We're trying to figure out how much water is going there. We're trying to figure out what basin characteristics there are. We're trying to figure out what sort of stream gauges are nearby or stream gauge data can tell us. Then ultimately what we're trying to figure out is the 100 year flow rate or potentially a lower flow rate if you're concerned with that. So there are basically, you know, USGS sets up or keeps track of, I'm not sure if they totally manage all of these. They basically keep track of all of these different rain gauges um, throughout Clark County, throughout the state of Washington, and actually throughout all of the US. And they log all of this data and keep it, make it readily available on a website called StreamStats. And StreamStats also has some other really cool tools which I'm gonna show you today. So in this first diagram, you can see these are all, all four of these are the um, rain gauges that you could get information from. But it's really good to think about where, like in this point, this is the point that I've selected on my model here. Um, it's really good to think about where are is your site in relation to a stream gauge? Because if you're really close to a stream gauge, you may be able to just use the data from that stream gauge and just slightly alter it to um, be more site specific. But anyways, in this example, you can basically just click on a point and it will automatically delineate a basin for you, um, which is pretty sweet. Um, it's kind of got some cool like GIS capabilities within it. Um, and then it basically gives you all of this information based on kind of background, um, I don't know, background, I don't know, more GIS information. It's pulling uh, this whole basin is 100.7 square miles. It's giving you mean annual precipitation, precipitation for that area. It's giving you <coughs> the average slope. It's giving you percentage covered by canopy. So it's giving a, a bunch of information that you can use to then uh, theoretically create, you know, or determine what the 100 year flow rate is for that value. So I'm gonna actually jump into StreamStats really quickly and show you just how easy it is to do this. This is gonna be that fish weir place that we went up in uh, Washougal. So literally just go to the website, type in And now it's asking me Oregon or Washington. Now I'll get into this a little bit later, but there are certain, I guess you could call them regression equations for each state. So each state has essentially tried to compile all the data for their stream gauges and turn them into a relatively simple formula to use to determine what your 100 year flow rate is. So we're gonna be in Washington and that will tell us to use the Washington um, stream gauges. Get into this site. So once you zoom in far enough, it basically pixelates where all your streams are. So I'm going to delineate, click on this button. Just going to pick some little spot. And he said the point is valid, so it's now going to delineate a stream basin for me. Now that I've delineated my basin, it basically automatically does it for you. I will say that it's going off of you know pretty crude geometric or um, a DEM model or uh, contour data. So for example, like if you zoom in a little bit, you can see there's like some areas that are kind of crossing roads. Like that's not actually gonna happen. If there are if there are any catch basins or pipes in this area, that's not gonna be accurate. So if you really wanted to dial in and make sure this is perfect, you can actually go in and edit your basin. You can add or remove different areas. If you're, especially if you're in a more urbanized area, I would definitely uh, say that you should definitely do that. All right, so now I have my basin. So you can actually download it as a shape file, which is pretty snazzy if you want, or we're just gonna continue along here. And it basically gives you two different options. One is what's called a regression-based scenario, those kind of uh, regression equations I was talking about earlier. Um, or you can just download the basin characteristics for your file and manually calculate them. Now I would typically say regression-based scenarios are the way to go. It will literally just click on a button and it's gonna tell you what your 100-year flow rate is here. It's that easy. However, for whatever coincidental reason, the state of Washington has been having some issues with some of their regression formulas. And so they're currently working on updating them. Um, if it could be done in a week, they could be done in a month or two, I don't know. But typically, you know, if you would have come back here a few months ago, this would be working. But we can actually do it by hand. It's probably good for this um, situation for us. So I'm telling you, I basically want to grab all the data for this area. And then, voila. I now have 
you know, again, this should be roughly the same. This is the same area I did before. So 100 square, 101 square miles, mean elevation, 100 inches. Um, yeah, basically a bunch of different data that we could then throw this information into an aggression equation, and that will give us um, that will give us 100 year flow rate. Um, so I'm going to talk about three different methodologies to determine what the 100 year flow rate is for this basin. Um, and the first one is going to be regression equation. So I kind of mentioned this a couple different times, but basically what the state of USGS did in the state of Washington, and I think they did something different in the state, other states, is they split Washington into four different uh, zones. One, two, three, four. We're currently in zone four, which as you can see, actually covers a little bit of Oregon, and it covers quite a bit of area that has very different soil, forest, uh, precipitation data as we do. Um, but they kind of lumped these in and what they felt like were meaningful, um, meaningful numbers. And they came up with this formula right here. Q equals A, big A, little b. Like, what does all that crap mean? Like, it's kind of uh, doesn't really make a lot of sense. But the basically the long and short of it is these little exponents and little uh, variables are all uh, basically constants or coefficients that vary depending on what type of storm you're looking at. Um, so you're really, if you want to calculate the flow rate for that stream we talked about earlier, you are really just looking putting in two uh, two variables that you're going to pull from that dat big data table, uh, area and precipitation. So in our case, you know, that 101.69, then we have an average of 100 inches um, in our drainage basin. And that is going to, right there with, you know, making sure these variables are correct for the type of storm you're looking at, are going to give us 16207 for our 100-year flow rate. Or if we wanted a two-year flow rate, it would be 5554. Um, which is pretty cool that you can just like generate it based on, you know, two data, two pieces of information. But then it starts to make you wonder, like, doesn't it matter based on how much forest cover I have? Like, shouldn't it matter based on all these other information? Shouldn't there be a lot more variables? I mean, I'm trying to be pretty accurate. Um, but based on the statistical analysis that they've done, they've determined that in this region, adding those other variables didn't have a big enough effect to actually make them basically worth putting into this regression equation. But this is basically our magical aggression, regression equation. Um, and so, you know, any point in this area, theoretically, you should be able to throw this in here. But as I mentioned before, what if we're in Washougal? What if we have, you know, 60% tree canopy versus much closer in where we might have 10 or 20% tree canopy? You would see much different numbers. So this is really not the most accurate number um, to go off of. And the whole point is that you're trying to cover a huge area. You're trying to come up with some sort of some sort of value. Um, uh, but this is kind of, in a, in a way, sort of similar to what we get when we do like the SES method or the rational method. Um, there's just a lot of generalizations that go into it. So the next option would be what's called the stream gauge option, um, which is essentially looking at nearby stream gauges. And in this case, we have one just downstream, which is incredibly handy. And basically trying to figure out what is the 100-year flow rate at this point? And then can we just compare the area going to this? And are there any other, there's a slight exponent number as well. This is actually the same B coefficient um, as in this model. And this B varies based on the, the storm event. Um, but yeah, can we, you know, basically say, okay, well, we had 101 square miles here. We probably only have like 120 or 110 here. So if we know what this value is, we know for sure we have actual stream gauge measurements. We should be able to figure out what this one is, right? It makes perfect sense. Um, and so that's basically what this methodology is showing you. Um, so we'll, we'll just look at the downstream stream gauge. And when you're in stream stats, so that stream gauge that we were interested in, you can literally just click on it. And there's two links that we'll get. One is what's called the stream stats gauge page. And on this, it literally would have straight up give you the 100-year peak value. So 
550, which if you'll remember is quite a bit different than that 16,000. Although granted we have a slightly higher um, area going to this. But I imagine that once we do that area formula, we'll probably end up with like a 30,000. Um, so quite a bit different number than that regression equation. Um, or we can, I guess you could also look and see, okay, contributing drainage area, 108 square miles. So we are, you know, I don't know, six or 7% higher than what our little point is. The other option you can do is you can actually get the actual stream flow data yourself, and you could basically do that. What it's doing is a log Pearson type analysis. You can basically come in here and you can basically download the data yourself. You can see here, you know, we basically have data from 1945 all the way up to 1980. And then they, I guess they have a recorded number for 1996 as well. And it gives you, this is, these are the peak, I guess this is kind of like not that helpful format to look in. It gives you the gauge height. So we might be using this data uh, for our HECRAS models is probably gonna be helpful. The height above the gauge elevation. And then also gives you the stream stats uh, or the stream flow data for that um, number. And then what you can basically do is you can You can basically calculate this number yourself. And it's really not that, this kind of looks like a little bit of a crazy spreadsheet, but it's not really that complicated. So what I've done here, I've gone in, I've just copied over all of the um, peak flows from 1945 up to 1981. And then I, you basically sort them. So you can actually interestingly see that the peak was not in 1996, it was 1978, which is kind of interesting. Um, and then after all that, it generates out a peak flow rate right here, 35,700, which is not exactly that 35,500, but it's pretty darn close. I'm not sure if they may pulled out a low flow or something along those lines. This is essentially what um, this stream stats data is actually doing. It's doing, you know, pretty much the exact same um, analysis. I'm not sure why there's a slightly different number here, but, but anyways, that's essentially, you know, I would say probably in this case, especially the most accurate way to figure out what what uh, your peak Q peak you should use is. It's probably gonna be in that 30,000 range, which again, a lot higher than, um, than that 16,000 we calculated earlier. So if you didn't have that handy gauge, you'd be in danger of putting in a bridge that's too small. That's true. Using the regression equation. By using the regression equation, exactly. So this gets us to our next point, which is the kind of ultimate um, when you have a lot of time and money to spend on doing it like the best way possible, which is basically you'd be creating a custom regression equation. You'd be looking at a lot of, you know, say we weren't so close to this stream gauge. Now, say we were even at a smaller tributary off of this stream. You could look at all the surrounding stream gauges. And if you really wanted to go big, you could probably make one for all of Clark County. And you could essentially do statistical analysis to figure out which of those variables in that chart we showed earlier, which are of these are meaningful, you know, which one does make a difference for um, our, our events. And, you know, are these values, these A, B, C values, do they make sense to compare uh, for the, for the stream analysis in Clark County? So if someone ever had a, we're looking for a big back burner project to put on their list. This could be something you could theoretically do. But again, this would be really valuable for us and it would be um, kind of the next level of hydrologic analysis.